fellow aerodynamics, this is Professor Wong. We have already built an airplane in CAD. Today, we are going to mesh it. Previously, we have generated a watertight geometry of an airplane. We are going to show how to mesh this airplane. The first step is to generate a surface mesh. To generate the surface mesh, we go to the Flex Compute website, log in, and click Surface Mesh. On this interface, you're going to see a list of previously generated surface meshes. To make a new surface mesh, you click the Upload button. You choose the airplane.csm file you previously generated, and then you specify a name for the surface mesh. The most important part is to specify what you want the surface mesh to look like. And do you specify that through a JSON file? So here is an example of the JSON file we use. In that JSON file, we specify what is the maximum edge length you want the surface mesh to have. The smaller the maximum edge length is, the more accurate and more expensive your computational fluid dynamics will be. We also specify a curvature resolution angle. If you specify a smaller angle, the surface mesh will be more refined in areas of large curvature, such as the nose of the fuselage. You also specify a growth rate. The growth rate controls how anisotropic cells grow into isotropic cells on the surface mesh. If we set the growth rate very close to 1, then the thickness of the layers grow very slowly. A larger growth rate is going to allow the mesh to grow more aggressively from anisotropic cells to isotropic cells. We can also specify meshing parameters specific to each edge and each face. The name of the edges and faces here are what we specified previously when building the CAT model. Here, for example, we are specifying an anisotropic meshing near the leading edge. Here, the curvature around the leading edge will be resolved with an angular resolution of 1 degrees. The trailing edge will also be refined in the direction normal to the trailing edge. And the mesh spacing in that normal direction is going to be 10 to the minus 3. We are also specifying a finer mesh resolution on the entire wing. Now we click the Submit button. The CAD geometry we previously built is now uploaded, and the meshing is going to be in progress. After a few minutes, the status of the mesh is going to change from generating to processed. Now we can click the mesh and look at what the generated surface mesh looks like. To visualize the mesh, we click the Visualization 3D. And over here, you can look at what the mesh is like and what are the faces and edges. You can unselect and select the faces and edges to see if they are placed at the right location as you intended. You can also check to make sure that specific regions like the leading edge and the trailing edge are refined as you specified. Once the surface mesh is generated successfully, and you have checked to make sure it is actually what you want, you can start generating a volume mesh. To generate the volume mesh, you need another configuration specified through the JSON format. In this configuration, the refinement factor specifies how fine you want the mesh to be globally. For example, by changing the refinement factor from 1 to 2, the total number of volume mesh will roughly double. The first layer thickness specifies the thickness of the first layer mesh near the boundary. This thickness is very important to specify because it determines whether the mesh is able to capture the boundary layer near the solid surfaces. The growth rate specifies how fast the mesh changes from very thin layers near the boundary to isotropic mesh away from the boundary. 
We can also specify specific regions in which you want to refine the mesh. Here, for example, we are specifying a box with different sizes in the x, y, and z directions. Within this box, we allow a maximum mesh size of 0.1. Now we click the submit button and we see that there is a new volume mesh that is in the, in the generating status. Once the volume mesh finishes generating, you can click into it and look at its statistics. So here you can see that it has 17 million grid points. 7 million tetrahedrons, 32 million prisms. You can also look at its boundaries. It has a far field, a fuselage, a wing left, and wing right. These are the same names we specified when building the CAD using ESP. Now we have successfully generated a volume mesh. We are ready to run the computational fluid dynamics.